Hello and welcome to Pre-Algebra Lesson 9. And in this lesson, we're going to learn about vertical subtraction. So our lesson objectives for today would be to learn how to subtract multi-digit numbers. And also, we want to learn the borrowing procedure. So in a previous lesson, I taught you how to do vertical addition. And vertical addition is a convenient way to add multi-digit numbers together. And again, when I say multi-digit numbers, I mean numbers that are larger than one digit. So vertical subtraction is essentially the same thing. It's a convenient way to subtract multi-digit numbers. But there's some differences that we need to cover. So let's explain through an example here. The first step for vertical subtraction, we want to line up the subtraction problem vertically and by place value. So you recall with vertical addition, it's the same first step. So let's say that we have, I don't know, 47 plus 13 for the addition problem. And let's say that we have 47 minus 13 for the subtraction problem. So here's the main thing that you need to understand. When we do addition, addition is commutative. So the order that we add in does not matter. So in other words, when I go through and I stack these numbers on top of each other, it doesn't matter what I put on the bottom and what I put on the top. So I can do 47 plus 13 like this or I could do 13 plus 47 like this. Either way, I'm going to get the same answer. So we can go through and add. 7 plus 3 is 10. And we know we need to carry here. So the 1 goes into the next column. 1 plus 4 is 5. 5 plus 1 is 6. So I get 60. If I come over here, I'm going to get the same thing. 3 plus 7 is 10. Carry the 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 plus 4 is 6. I get 60. Now with subtraction, we don't have the commutative property. So what goes on top and what goes on the bottom is going to matter. So you want to take the leftmost number for your subtraction problem. And remember, this is called the menu end, the menu end. And you want to put that on top. So when we're stacking these numbers, that guy has to go on top. And then you want to take your subtrahend. That's 13 in this case, your subtrahend. And that's the value that's being taken away or subtracted away. And you want to put that guy on the bottom. And again, notice how we're stacking the numbers. They have to be lined up by place value. So all the numbers in the ones place have to line up. All the values or the numbers in the tens place, okay, they have to line up as well. And if we had hundreds and thousands and so on and so forth, those would have to be lined up. So that's your first step. And again, you have to make sure that the correct number is on top and the correct number is on bottom. That way you get the right answer. Okay, for the second step, we want to draw a horizontal line directly underneath the bottom number, just like we did with vertical addition, and then place a minus symbol, okay, the minus symbol to the left of the bottom number. So essentially, it's the same thing as when you're doing vertical addition. You're just putting a minus symbol in instead of a plus symbol. So we had 47 and we had 13 stacked on top of each other. So again, draw a horizontal line underneath the bottom number and put a minus symbol or a subtraction symbol to the left of the bottom number. And we're ready to move to the next step. So we have 47 minus 13 like that. And for step three, we subtract in the ones column and place the result directly below the line, just like we did with vertical addition. So if I do seven minus three, that gives me four. And I just put that directly below in the ones column. You just think about this as a ones column that just goes all the way down. Now, in the next step, we're just going to move to the left, just like we did in vertical addition. So in the next step, I would just move to the left and I would say, okay, what is four minus one? Well, that's three. And then I've finished the problem. You just keep working right to left. So you start all the way in the rightmost column and you just keep going to the left. So we end up with 34 as our answer for 47 minus 13. Okay, let's look at some examples now. So we're gonna start out with 96 minus 35. So stack the numbers on top of each other. 96, 35, and remember, this 96 here, this is your menu end that's gotta go on top. And then 35, that's your subtrahend that's gotta go on the bottom. We'll throw our subtraction symbol out there and put our horizontal line underneath, and we're ready to subtract. Remember, we're gonna start in the ones column, the rightmost column, and work our way to the left. So six minus five is one. And then we go to the next column, the tens column, 
and we have 9 minus 3, and that's 6. So 96 minus 35 is 61. Let's look at 87 minus 23. Okay, we're going to stack these numbers on top of each other and make sure they're lined up by place value. So remember, 87, your menu end, has to go on top. 23, the subtrahend, has to go on the bottom. So we're going to subtract beginning in the 1's column. So we have 7 minus 3, that's 4. And then we work our way to the left. Now we're in the 10's column. 8 minus 2, that's 6. So our answer here is 64. Okay, now we have 25,375 minus 10,164. Again, we're going to stack these numbers on top of each other. This number, the leftmost number, the 25,375, the menu end, has to go on top. The subtrahend, 10,164, has to go on the bottom. Okay, so we're going to start on the ones column. And we're going to do 5 minus 4, that's 1. We're just going to work our way to the left. Now we're in the 10's column. 7 minus 6, that's 1. Now we're in the 100's column. 3 minus 1, that's 2. Now we're in the 1000's column. 5 minus 0, that's 5. And now we're in the 10,000's column. 2 minus 1 is 1. So we end up with 15,211. So the examples that we've looked at so far are not very challenging at all. They're actually very, very simple. But in the next few examples, we're going to see some things that are going to kind of challenge us a little bit at first. So in many cases, the lower digit of a column is larger than the upper digit. When this occurs, we use a procedure called borrowing. And it's best for me to explain this through an example. So let's look at 43 minus 17. So we start the problem off just like we would any other. So we'd have 43 on top minus 17 on the bottom. And what happens is when we try to subtract in the ones column, we see that three is smaller than seven. So what happens when I try to do three minus seven? We haven't gotten to integers yet, so we don't know how to do this. Essentially, we only know how to subtract when the left number is bigger than the right number, right? When the menu end or the amount that you're starting with is larger than the subtrahend or the amount you're trying to take away. So what we're going to do in this case is we're going to use this procedure called borrowing. Okay, we're going to borrow. And how this works is I go to the next digit to the left and I'm going to borrow one. Okay, so I'm going to cross this four out and I'm going to subtract away one and that would give me three. So now this four is now a three. And I'm borrowing it and I'm sending it over to the column to the right and I just put a one in front of the digit in that column. So now this 3 is a 13, and I'm able to subtract. So I can say 13 minus 7 is 6, and then I just move to the column to the left, and I say 3 minus 1 is 2. So I end up with 26. Now, let me explain a little bit further as far as why this works. If we think about the numbers in terms of the place value of the digits involved, 43 is what? It's 40, it's 40 plus 3. And 17 is 10 plus 7. So if we think about what we just did, when I crossed out this 4 and made it a 3, you think about this, I crossed this 4 out, and making it a 3, I basically made it a 30. Right? I made it a 30. And then I put a 1 in front of that 3. So if I put a 1 in front of that 3, it's a 13. So 30 plus 13 is still 43. I just changed the way it looked. Right? I didn't change the value of the number, so I didn't do anything illegal here. So now when you kind of look through the columns, you can see that, okay, I have 13 minus 7, that gives me 6, and I have 30 minus 10, that gives me 20, or a 2 basically because it's in the 10's place, right? Two groups of 10 is 20. So that's essentially what we're doing when we're borrowing. We're not changing the value of the number, we're just changing the way it looks temporarily so that we can perform the subtraction in that column. Okay, let's take a look at another one. So we have 512 minus 395. So 512 goes on top minus 395, which is on the bottom. And when we try to do our subtraction in the ones column, we have two minus five. We know that two is the smaller number, so we need to borrow. So I'm gonna go to the next column over to the left and I'm going to take 1 away. So 1 minus 1 is 0. So now that's 0. And then I'm going to put a 1 in front of this digit 2. Okay, So I'm putting a 1 in front of that. I end up with a 12. 
So 12 minus 5 is 7. Now I have another problem because when I get to this column, I have a 0 and I'm trying to subtract away a 9. So I need to borrow again. So I'm going to the next column over and I'm going to take 1 away from this. So 5 minus 1 is 4 and I'm going to put a 1 in front of this. So now this 0 becomes a 10. So then 10 minus 9 is 1. Okay, 10 minus 9 is 1. And then 4 minus 3 is 1. So we end up with 117. So again, let's look at these two numbers in expanded notation and see if we can figure out what we just did. So 512 is 500 plus 10 plus 2. 395 is 300 plus 90 plus 5. So basically when we started out, we rewrote the number by taking this 10 and sending it over here. So this became 0 and this became 12. Right? Just think about adding 10 to 2. So now I have 500 plus 12, that's still 512. Haven't changed the value of the number. So we did our subtraction, we did 12 minus 5, we got 7. But now when I went to the 10s, I had a 0 here and I was trying to take away 90. So what I did was I went over to the hundreds place and I borrowed 100. So I took this and made it 400, right? I subtracted away 100 and I sent it over here and I made this 100. So then 100 minus 90 gave me 10, okay, gave me 10. And now I was just left with 400 minus 300 and that gave me 100. And so now if I look at this number, this is exactly what we got. 100 plus 10 plus 7, which is 117. So again, that's what borrowing is doing. It's just temporarily changing what these columns look like so that you can do your subtraction. But in order to really understand it, just go through as you're doing it for the first few times. Write the numbers in expanded notation and look at what you're actually doing. Okay, for the final problem, we have 190,005 minus 79,877. So we'll start out, again, stack the numbers on top of each other. 190,005 goes on top, 79,877 goes on the bottom. And of course, when you start trying to subtract here, you notice that there's a problem. 5 minus 7, we need to borrow. But we'll notice when we look at our neighbor to the left, you have a 0 there. You can't borrow from that 0. So basically, when this happens, you have to go to the left until you find a non-zero number. So we have to go all the way to this guy over here, to this 9, and borrow from that. But it's not as straightforward as you think. Take 1 away from the 9, you get 8. I have to send it to this guy here. Okay, I can't just send it express to the 5. So we got to go through this long, tedious process. So this 0 becomes a 10, and then I'm going to borrow from that. So this 10 will become a 9, and then this 0 will become a 10. Then this 10 will become a 9, and this 0 will become a 10. Then this 10 will become a 9, and this 5 will become a 15. So all that worked just so I could subtract here. So now I can finally subtract in the 1's column. 15 minus 7 is 8. When we move to the left, this is now a 9. 9 minus 7 is 2. Move to the left, 9 minus 8 is 1. Move to the left, 9 minus 9 is 0. Move to the left, 8 minus 7 is 1. And then we have this 1 here. We're not subtracting anything away from it, so it just comes down. And we end up with 110,128 as our answer. So for one final time, let's write these numbers in expanded notation and see if we can figure out what happened. Scroll down a little bit and get a little room. So 190,005 is what? It's 100,000 plus 90,000 plus 5. And then our other number is 79,877, and that's going to be 70,000 plus 9,000 plus 800 plus 70 plus 7. Okay, now this isn't really lined up, so let me try to line this up for you. So 100,000 plus 90,000 plus, you'd have a blank spot here for the thousands place. You'd have a blank spot here for the hundreds place. You'd have a blank spot here for the tens place. And then finally, you'd have a five in the ones place. Okay, for this number, you'd put 70,000 here, plus 9,000, plus 800, plus 70, plus seven. So when we start our subtraction problem, we immediately see that five is smaller than seven. 
So we need to borrow. But when we look at our neighbors here to the left, they don't have anything that we can take. So we got to go all the way to the 10,000s place. So in the problem, if we go back up here, you remember we crossed this out, we subtract away one, we got eight. But that eight is in the 10,000s place, so it's really 80,000. So if I cross this out, I'm subtracting away 10,000. I'm going to write this as 80,000 now. That's the new value. And I'm going to send 10,000 to my neighbor to the right. So now he has 10,000 there. And I haven't changed the value of the number because 100,000 plus 80,000 plus 10,000 plus 5 is still 195. Now I need to keep going until I get to that 5 there. So I'm going to keep borrowing. So I'm going to cross this out. And basically, since I'm in the thousands place now, I'm going to take 1,000 away. So this is going to become 9,000. So now I have 9,000. And I'm going to send that 1,000 that I took away over here. So now this is 1,000. And I need to keep doing this. So I'm going to take, now I'm in the hundreds place, I'm going to take 100 away. So this is going to become 900. And I'm going to throw 100 over here in the tens place. Now I'm going to do it one last time so that I can reach this 5 over here. So I'm in the tens place, so I'm going to take 10 away. So this will become 90, and this will become 5 plus 10, or 15. Okay, think about that as 15. Now when we do our subtraction, 15 minus 7 is 8. 90 minus 70 is 20. 900 minus 800 is 100. 9,000 minus 9,000 is 0. And 80,000 minus 70,000 is 10,000. And this, I'm not subtracting anything away from it, so 100,000 is going to stay there. So when we look at this right here, this is 100,000 plus 10,000 plus 100 plus 20 plus 8, or 110,128, which is exactly what we got right here.